Hello and welcome back to Casa Joy, my villa in Spain, Mijas Costa, where the weather is still lovely here, even in the winter time. Now this dish I've got for you today, if you've been following the little series, we've been doing lots of different kind of foods, they're all from the restaurant in La Cara, the little geranium in La Cara, my little baby restaurant, which is doing really well. I mean, it's a really busy little place. And one of my assistants in the kitchen there, one of my chefs in the kitchen there is young Junior here, um, who's learned a lot. And actually, um, over the last six months since we opened, you've, you've, you've learned tons, haven't you? Yeah. And he's now doing pretty much everything. You know, he can do the sauce, he can do the, the meat cooking, the fish cooking, um, the pastries, the desserts, and all sorts of other stuff as well. So he's really turned into a little superstar. And we've got him here as a little help today for me, and he's going to cook the beef for us. Now, this dish is uh, beef stroganoff, and a beef stroganoff is just one of those lovely dishes to have on a cold day, if we get such a thing over here, but we do in the evenings, it is cold, and you come home and you have some beef stroganoff, and you have it with rice, or you have it with mashed potato, lovely with garlic mash, by the way, and you sit, and you just indulge, and you feel that it's homely, it's comfort food, and it's great food in front of the TV as well, cuddled up to each other, not you and me, um, <laughs> and sitting on the sofa with a fork and some beef stroganoff and a great film. You are in heaven. So I'm going to show you how to make a proper beef stroganoff. Now, not to condemn any other restaurant, I wouldn't dare do that, especially in, um, on this TV channel. Um, but I've eaten on the coast a lot and we've had beef stroganoff and you know, I have it a lot because I like that kind of food. And it's generally beef that's been stewed for ages in the sauce and it's dried up and it's chewy, even though it's stewing beef kind of thing. And it's, the sauce is okay, it's not amazing and it isn't exciting. And I'm gonna show you how to make a stroganoff absolutely exciting and really super sexy. And the first ingredient that's so important to that is the fillet of beef because you can use a cheap cut of beef. My cameraman Brian is back with us today um, after a bit of a holiday break and he's the one that doesn't speak any any, well, none of them speak any English, do they? Well, the camera people. So he doesn't really know what I'm doing or saying. He just grins and smiles at me and he points the camera in my direction. I do the rest. But as you can see, Brian, this little piece of beef here, this baby here, is a great piece of fillet of beef. And this is actually from Galicia, but you can get great beef from Angus and you can get great beef from the Irish beef over here. It's fantastic. And some of the Spanish beef in the north is really good. I mean, not so much in the south. There's not a lot of grass down here, you know? And so there's nothing for them to eat. If you look around, you can get some great fillet. You want to cut it, to, this is a, a good couple of portions here. We don't need that much meat. This is, this is about, uh, what would you say? That's about 350 grams, which is about 10 ounces, something like that, something like that of meat. So the first thing we're going to do is season it up. And Junior's here to help me cook it. As I said, season it with some mold and salt. You know, you've been watching the program. We use a lot of mold and salt. People are going to go, wow, that's a lot. But you do need a bit, don't you? Need, you know what I'm like with mold and salt. And we get through a bucket a day. And my wife says, oh, Michelle goes, oh, wait, I make mold and salt. Have you got it's really expensive. Oh, shut up. Anyway, so then we put some garlic and some parsley. And this is just dried garlic and parsley. And it's a good little seasoning thing to have on your shelves at home. It gives lovely flavours to it. Don't forget to put some black pepper on as well. Freshly ground black pepper. You don't need to over season the beef. Because the beef is lovely. We're not overpower it too much. And we're gonna cook that in a really hot pan over there. And Junior's gonna go and sort that out. Now, the pot pan, by the way, is, I couldn't just quickly go over here and show you. It's just a pan without any oil. And what we do is we add a touch of oil and then, then start cooking it. So it starts smoking the kitchen out. And while he's smoking the kitchen out, I want to talk to you about the sauce. So I'm going to take you back over, if that's all right, Brian, back to here. So what I've done here with the sauce, the sauce that makes it special, a strong enough is a mushroom sauce, and it's got, a, it's got the little twist of, of cream, but with lemon, like a sour cream, and mustard. And that's kind of the basis of a strong enough. Now, in here, in the pan, I've got some onions and garlic and mushrooms. But the trick here is to use really good mushrooms, so what you want to do is, is fry off some good mushrooms, like these ones, little wild mushrooms which are around. They're in the supermarkets, not all the supermarkets, but they're in the better supermarkets. I mean, some of them, I'm not sure that I can mention supermarket names on air, can I? Is that a nod? Yes, I can. That's great. A nod from the director in the, in the audience there. Thanks, director. Well, Campo sells amazing mushrooms, and it's not that far away, Kenyatta. And um, it does have a selection of amazing wild mushrooms. I get trompettes, I get pied de moutons, I get chirols, I get all sorts of things from there. You can get them from your, 
veg supplies, but it's hit and miss. And you know, if we, we're in the trade, so at home it may, may be even more difficult. So this is a selection of wild mushrooms, and that's the thing that gives this dish a little bit of more of a oomph, because we've got a great piece of beef, we've got great mushrooms, we're gonna make a great sauce out of all these lovely things, and we're gonna finish it with fresh truffles, like this, Brian, and classically parsley, obviously, some parsley. So, just think about it, it's not rocket science. If you've got brilliant beef, you've got a lovely sauce of wild mushrooms, you've got some fresh truffles, you've got some truffle oil on it, and you pull it together, guess what? It tastes like, wow, it's fantastic. But if you have a crappy piece of beef and you braise it in a sauce, that's, you know, that's when it goes wrong. So this is how to make the sauce. Mushrooms in there, some of these lovely wild mushrooms. I'm gonna drop a few more in there as well. And I'm gonna go over and see Junior and just finish them off on the stove in a second. So mushrooms, onions, and garlic in there. That's all at the moment. Okay, so Brian's gonna show, come over with me. And I'm gonna show Brian that over to my little electric stove, which all chefs hate. We don't like cooking on electric, we like cooking on gas. We're cooking on gas, I'm a junior. Always, a little bit of olive oil. I would just give those mushrooms a little bit more of a fry. I started it off for you so you wouldn't have to see me boringly slice an onion and fry it with garlic, but that's all it is. It's just onions and garlic and mushrooms. I mean, you don't need me to show you that, do you? There's one big ingredient that really needs to be in there though, and that is a glass of wine. And it's really important to get a glass of wine in your mushrooms and your onions. So what you do, you take the wine, you pour it in the glass. Cheers. I was gonna say happy Christmas, but we've had Christmas already, so. Ooh. Do you know, it's the first glass of red wine I've had for a while. It's lovely, because I don't like it staining my teeth. So there we are, look, pour the wine in the, in the, into those mushrooms and get all that going. Can you get in there, Brian? Can you see all that going on? Then I'm gonna add a little bit of pimenta douche, like paprika or pimenta douche, sweet pepper. I wouldn't use a smoked one or a spicy one because you don't want it to be too spicy. Just a touch in there. It just helps the color and it helps the flavors. It gets it all going. So mushrooms, onions, garlic, pimenta douche, a little bit of mustard. Now, I left it in the jar because I'm not shy of telling you guys that the best mustard for a strong enough isn't actually English mustard. I mean, we buy all sorts of mustards. You know, the grain mustards, the whole grain mustards, the Dijon's mustards, a, a range in the restaurant, in the Lacarda, in the, in the Lagerne, don't we? But the one that really stands out in a strong enough, that gives that little bit of kick and punch, you know, is English mustard. And Coleman's is the only one. It's a big spoon like that. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Coleman's. For those of you who think that this is just a setup, I'm not so lucky to be sponsored by Coleman's. <laughs> But it is fantastic mustard, and anybody that eats mustard will, will agree with me. I mean, that is kind of what mustard's all about. It's got a kick to it. And when they bring up this American stuff, you know? I love the Americans, I mean, I couldn't eat a whole one, but I love them. But when they bring up the American stuff, I go, well, that's not mustard. This is mustard. I'm looking at my director all the time over my shoulder to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. And when she goes like that, I know I've got to shut up. Okay, so back to this. We've got mustard, we've got mushrooms, we've got onions. We've got to get a spoon and we're gonna quickly taste that. And I'm gonna put some stock. Can I just get into the stock pot for a sec, Junior? Let's leave that there for a minute. Brian, can you come over here and have a look at this? So in here, I've got a beef stock. And this is another absolutely crucial ingredient to any, any dish you're doing that involves a sauce. You've gotta have the basis of a sauce. And the basis of stock. So this is a, a stock made with meat, bits of meat, trimmings of meat, made with garlic, Carrots, garlic cloves look, carrots, celery, some herbs. Basically, I go in my fridge and I say, ah, I need to use that, I need to use that, I need to use that, providing it's not things like peppers and things. And then very classically in a traditional kind of French way, which was always garlic, onions, in the base of all sauces, garlic, onions, celery, carrots, and then the meat, sweat it all off, add some red wine, and I, Think at home, we make a, a proper fresh stock out of roasted bones, but at home you're not gonna do that. So I think at home you can use the gravy granules you get, then add that and some of that red wine, I'll turn over for Junior, and you'll end up with that. And that's really important because when we pass that over to, through the sieve, 
Could you just pass that for me, Junior? Just put, pour a little bit on top of that. Can you, can you all still see? So we're pouring the sauce through the sieve to get rid of all the bits, but we want all the juices. That'll do. Right, so Brian, look. Brian's the cameraman, fully loaded in Spanish, doesn't speak sin anglais, inglés. Hablo poco, hablo fantastico español, me. No, not much. I'm learning it very, very fast. Now that tastes really good. I would say, I'd add a touch more mustard to it, just a touch. And a touch more of that red wine. Do you remember that? red wine we poured in there. I think it's really important at this stage of the proceedings is to add, add a touch more. So, look at that baby go. Now come on, let's go over and finish this dish. And this shows how quick and easy this is. So, back to the board. We've got this lovely sauce. The mushrooms and the onions and the garlic and the red wine. The mustard, don't forget the mustard. Um, and it is, I mean honestly, it is, it is divine. As it is, it's divine. A pinch of salt, not too much. I'm going to put a tiny touch of truffle oil in it. I'm also going to put it in at the end as well. Just to give it that little bit of finesse. It's, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then a little bit of cream. Now this is just cream uh, whipped up. We're gonna add a touch of lime or lemon to it. Just squeezed in sour cream. And season it with a bit of salt and a bit of pepper. Now the sour cream is very classic here in a stroganoff. Let's whisk that in and spoon a little bit. Don't throw it all in at once. Just spoon a little bit in and stir that in. So that it lightens it up. And what I call it is kind of, kind of cafe au lait, you know, coffee with milk. That's French, of course, but cafe con leche, I suppose, in Spanish. <laughs> the director gives me the thumbs up. I forget sometimes where I am. You see, I'm half French, so it's easy for me to think in French and not necessarily thinking in Spanish sometimes. So look, that's about ready. And I'm gonna just give it one more try. And it's, it is absolutely super. It's really super. The cream just gives it that little bit of the lemon. So the cream gives it that little bit of, I'm gonna use a French word, je ne sais quoi. You know, who knows what it is, but it's something. There's something there that just goes, mm. I love you, I love it. A little bit more pepper. It shouldn't be a peppery, spicy sauce, but I do like to feel the seasoning, and I think that I probably needed to put a bit more pepper in the cream. But I think that at this stage now, it can't possibly want anything more. But, but then again, I think what would be really lovely is some brandy. And what happened to that brandy at Christmas, Junior? I've got brandy right behind me. Look, right behind me. This is left over. Can you believe this was left over from Christmas? I mean, we obviously don't drink much, do we? So a little bit of brandy goes in there, right at the end. Now, hopefully you've had time to write some of these ingredients down. If not, I think you can find them on our website somewhere, which you can get in a nod, so you will. And that's it, heaven. That is perfect. You don't need to do any more than that, except put the beef in the plate and the sauce over. How is that beef doing, Jim? I love it, I love that baby, thank you. So this is a lovely piece of beef. It would be nice just to melt a little bit of butter over the top of that and just soften it up a little bit. But there it goes, look, on the board. Let it rest a bit, important to let it rest because otherwise, as soon as you cut it, the blood pours out and all the flavor ends up on the board. So we've rested it for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna cut it into beautiful, beautifully cooked, Junior into medium rare, look at that, beautiful pieces. 
Doesn't that look delectable? A little bit of salt on it, it seasons the inside, you see. When you've got the meat resting and you season the inside of the meat, you get the full flavor from it. It's just fantastic when it's like that. So then we're gonna cut each piece fairly neatly in half like that. And don't forget, I mean, there's quite a lot of beef here, so I don't think we need it all. So we're gonna build a little tower of beef, a bit like a kind of pont neuf, except that there's probably more than nine pieces there. And I think one more piece, because we've got an audience here of directors and producers, and they all kind of want to taste it. I know they are, so I'm gonna put one more bit on the top there. Okay, and that's it. That's another portion there. And then the sauce, which you've seen me make from scratch. I'm gonna pour that over. So this isn't really very traditional. Normally, the beef strong enough for beef gets cooked in the sauce, and the problem with that is, as I said at the beginning of the show, is you cook the beef in the sauce and you boil it up because the sauce naturally is, is kind of cooking out, so it's very hot. And then the beef toughens and it, you, you serve it and it's dry and it's tough and it's chewy. This way, I've got the most fantastic beef. Um, it has had the benefit of the sauce because it's now kind of marinating in that sauce as I pour it over. It's had that, it doesn't need much more than that. The meat is beautifully seasoned. The sauce is delicious. We've got all those flavors of mustard and everything in it. Not too much sauce either. And then we're gonna finish that. Can I have some parsley chopped, Junior? Can you just do that for me? Really, really quick. Um, and a bit of truffle. So Junior's gonna just quickly chop a bit of parsley. I'm gonna slice a bit of truffle, which is gonna go on the top, okay? A little bit of truffle oil, which we put in it as well, but when I say a little bit, a bit, a bit more than a little. But when I buy this, um, Brian, not that he, as I said, he doesn't really know what I'm saying. But when I buy this, I buy a bottle of truffle oil, then I take a half a bottle and put it in another bottle and I put olive oil on top. And the reason for that isn't because I'm a cheapskate, it's because it's very, very strong. And I think it's too strong just to pour liberally over food. So m just gently go gentle with it and put some olive oil in. And all these fresh truffle trimmings, we make our own oil out of that. So all the fresh truffles, get all the trimmings of it, like these outside bits, get into a bottle, olive oil, good quality olive oil, and you've got your own fresh truffle oil. Parsley has to be traditional with this, just around the outside of it, and a little bit of mold and salt, because where would we be without that? On the top, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a beef stroganoff. A beef stroganoff cooked to perfection by my assistant here, Junior. Junior Boy, we call him. He's a good lad. Now, Junior's cooked that medium rare. You saw that beef. Look how beautifully that is cooked. Uh, well done, Junior. And the sauce, wild mushrooms and a little bit of sour cream and mustard and brandy and that lovely beef stock we, you saw us make. And we didn't see us make it, but you saw it finished. And we talked about it and passed. Gives it all that beautiful flavor. Chopped parsley, fresh truffles, and then Bob's your uncle. And by the way, Sally's your aunt. Love you all lots, and see you next time, Brian. See you next time, folks. Thank you.